If the ocean is made up of a billion trillion water droplets and deserts are made up of countless grains of sand, then what is music made up of? And why is music called moving emotion or an emotional journey? And if anger as an emotion is distinctive, then why does music from two different composers on the same emotion sound different? These are the uncommon questions we ask in this video and explore their answers. To answer these questions, however, we need to dissect it further than just the sensory pleasure that music is. Some would say a song or a piece of music is just the lyrics. Others would say it's the singing. Some would say music is just the instruments and eventually we all come to the conclusion that music is a combination of all of these things. I'm sure you would agree that this is the most common perception of music. So to seek our uncommon questions, we need to explore music by breaking it down to its very elemental level and exposing its uncommon side. At its elementary level, music is built up of musical notes. A musical note is simply a symbol that denotes a musical sound and its pitch class. So different notes denote different sounds and different pitch classes. Though each individual note sounds distinctive from one another, on its own they are mostly unimpressive. But when these individual notes are combined in a meaningful way, they give us sensory pleasure and music is born. To put that in perspective for you, a musical note is like a brick. On its own, a brick is very unimpressive and it mostly has limited uses. But if you were to get many bricks and combine them in a meaningful order, then you have a house. In this case, what we use to combine bricks in a meaningful way is cement. Similarly, if musical notes are combined in its most harmonious order and you have music, then what combines them together? What is the cement for music? What do these brilliant composers use to combine different notes and take our feelings on that emotional journey? This is where our understanding of music as more than just a sensory pleasure begins, and the answer lies in the very question itself, emotion. Emotions are the bridge that connects our sensory world to the consciousness within and plays a vital role in how we understand or even perceive music. So, let's take a moment to define one of the laws of emotion. Emotion is linear. For example, your mother's anger towards something you did leads to an action against you. And the action was a right scolding where harsh words were used against you. Your emotional reaction to what your mother did will mostly be either of the following. One, you might feel anger toward her. You would feel this if you don't agree with her rationale for scolding you. Secondly, you could feel frustrated at yourself. You'd especially feel frustrated if you knew your mother was right all along. But you just don't want to admit it to yourself. So you mostly feel anger or frustration. Both are negative emotions. There might be a few out there who also might just feel guilty or even upset with themselves in this situation. But they are all still negative emotional states as well. Hence, we could argue that emotions are linear. So what you feel when you listen to music is linear to what the composer felt when he composed those notes. To put this in context for you, if the composer wants you to feel happiness, then he combines the musical notes in a happy order and happiness is evoked in you. If the composer wants you to feel a negative emotion, like sadness or melancholy, then he composes the notes with those emotions in mind and that is what is evoked in you when you listen to it. So it's safe to say that what a composer uses to combine different musical notes together is just emotion. And this composition is called music. The combination of these tiny emotions wrapping up grains of musical notes. Dunes rise and fall and so does the flow of music, hence making music moving emotion, thus answering our second question. By understanding music as moving emotion now, let's look at the last question of why does music from two different composers on the same emotion sound different? The answer for this lies in human perceptions. 
We all perceive the world differently and we all feel differently when subjected to the same realities of the world. Because emotions are so unique to the subject, that is why different composers create unique soundscapes for the same set of emotions. So, if two different composers make a composition about sadness, even though the emotion is distinctive, the music will always be different as each composer would perceive and express the same emotion differently. This is why music is infinite and we have more than one sad song, love song or a happy song that we listen to. Because we can then see sadness, love and happiness through many different lenses. These lenses are the consequence of the composer's and listener's perception on those emotions. With millions of people come millions of perceptions and hundreds of complex emotions. The probability of this is what makes music as complex a creation as its creator itself. If music is emotion and emotion is human, then what is music? It's nothing but human. It's no wonder that of all the species of our biosphere, we, humans, were the ones to have birthed and personified music. It is the gravity of our existential space. If everyone's perspective on music is different, then I'm very keen to know your thoughts on the same. And do feel free to share the same in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please hit the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the notification sign too. Welcome to the Uncommon Side community. If you like this video, please hit the like button as every like puts a smile on our face and share the video to like-minded people like us. Thank you for watching.